Hello, this is Pankaj Pachori and you are watching Business of Art. Today we are going to talk about museums. What is a museum and how important it is? Museums tell stories, they contain creations, the creations of nature, the creations of civilizations, the creations of man. Museums also contain the cultural soul of a people or of a nation. They are not deposit houses for unwanted objects or boring places. They are living embodiments of the history of this earth, every kind of history, including that of its art. And to discuss all this today and understand this, we have an eminent panel in the studio today. Kiran Nada, chairperson of Kiran Nada Museum of Art. Kiran Nada is a trustee of the Shiv Nada Foundation and chairperson Kiran Nada Museum of Art she is. And she's very acclaimed international bridge player as well and philanthropist and an avid art collector. We also have Malvika Singh, who's a publisher of the magazine Seminar, which is a thinking person's magazine. And she has worked with young professionals to transform significant hubs of arts and culture in Rajasthan into lively public spaces ranging from train stations and government museums in Rajasthan to Delhi's Bikaner House. Naman Ahuja is a curator of Indian art and co-editor of Mark Publication. He was curator of Indian sculpture at British Museum in 2001 and is most noted for his critically acclaimed exhibition on the body in Indian art and thought. Thank you, Naman. Thank you everyone for coming and uh, the government in Canada and some of the medical organizations there have now started prescribing visits to museum as therapy. Do you think we've reached a stage where people have to be told by their doctor to go see a museum? Well, I think in India, it is essential for somebody to tell them <laughs> that they need to go and see a museum. There is such an apathetic uh, feeling uh, where uh, the common person, be it the intelligentsia or the, or the common man uh, or the sort of upper, upper class, have really very little interest. I, in think, art. I think uh, mm. that the problem has been that um, these public institutions and spaces mm. uh, were controlled by and funded by the state. And I think therein lies the problem. Mm. I think you have to open these places up to people and you have to find other ways of involving the people in creating and energizing these spaces. Mm -hmm. So for instance, in Rajasthan, mm -hmm. uh, there was no money that was allocated to transform, let's say, Bikaner House. The shell was... Um, mm -hmm. uh, owned by the government. Was yeah. owned by the government, was restored mm -hmm. and handed over. And it was done. People came together, they sponsored shows and, and it's become it took a, off. Such yeah. a hub of uh, not yeah. just uh, uh, as a museum, but of cultural uh, space. What happens space is that I think this thing. we all want to own assets. Hmm. Hmm. You want to control the space, the land. Hmm. You want the right of preemption and to be able to seize people's private property, which the government of India holds, to be able to take their collections away from them at prices that the government of India determines. But you don't want to do anything to have the responsibility to be able to show them in the right way. Okay. Owning an asset is one thing, mobilizing it, and as you were saying, energizing it, doing something with that's, it is a whole other story. Before that, I'd, I'd come back to you. Why should the government get into the business of museums? Well, the reason we started uh, KNMA was with this belief that um, government doesn't, isn't the sole agent to mm. run museums. So it needed certain amount of intervention by private individuals mm. who had the resources mm. to set up a museum. So, but that doesn't take away from the fact that the control they have over various museums require a certain amount of action. They are bereft of any movement in those museums yeah. where they own huge mm. collections, fantastic real estate, and yet it, it, to get into them and to enjoy a visit is almost yeah, impossible. And that, that, that's, that's where the, where the, um, uh, the expertise come into them. Naman, I'd like to ask you about that. Number one, why museums are relevant in these times of globalized polarization, of a total 
uh, haziness about our culture and history globally. Museums preserve evidence that is visible to the public to be able to make their own minds up. It is, it's like a law court mm -hmm. in which you protect evidence very carefully so that it can be scrutinized subsequently. And it's up to lawyers who come into the law court to be able to reinterpret that evidence every time the case comes up. You don't do that with your museums in this country. They've become derelict storehouses where you've just chucked all your past and anything that configures your identity, your heritage, and they are left there to rot. And as a result, the space is boring and mm -hmm. it isn't being energized and mobilized. The second aspect of it is, why is a museum relevant? It's rather like asking, why do we need a library? Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. If a picture says a thousand words, well then you've got lakhs and lakhs of words on the walls of a single museum. Yeah. And, yeah. and you can't ask a question like why is it relevant to our times because oftentimes what we live in, the way we think of our tradition, has mm -hmm. been at the mercy of a rabble rouser who speaks so loud mm -hmm. that he is construing that tradition as he seems fit without having knowledge of history. Okay. Now, there are museums of every kind. There are museums of automobiles and there are museums yeah. of history. I work in history museums and I think that it is urgent that we attend to the art and to the history museum to be able to see that our history is actually much more complex yeah. and a many splendored beast. And it is not exactly the way it has been narrowly defined by somebody who seeks to speak in the name of our tradition. Yeah. Selectively. Exactly. That, that is the problem. A very that's, selective that's the... interpretation of what yeah. is our tradition. Absolutely. And our heritage and is being provided by it... somebody who speaks very loudly. Yeah. Then, then, then why do you think, I mean, the governments uh, should uh, have this uh, control over music? I don't because think... Because governments come and go. Your heritage, your art, your culture, that doesn't change. But, the history doesn't change. But Pankaj, that's exactly why mm. I feel that government should not be controlling it. Mm. So, you know, government is the landlord of the property. Hmm. and the artifact within. And a partnership needs to be defined legally, I mean with all that legality, so that it stands apart and is honored and celebrated for its expertise and knowledge. Hmm. And that partnership brings people like Naman into play, younger people into play, who actually operate the museum, run it, yeah. curate it, yeah. um, conserve it, with all the norms required international standards. Yeah. The moment you do that, it opens the doors. Now you take the Museum of Modern Art in Delhi. Every time I've wanted to visit it, and it's a, it's a symbolic thing. The gate is closed, there's a chokidar standing there. Yeah. Ja rahe? The gates are always so closed. Ja ja yeah. Why is the gate closed? Why aren't the gates open? Yeah. Yeah. Bikaner House. Yeah. Quickly, I'll tell you. The yeah. gates they close because they have been told there's a government property who gate banke rakke na. And if there's a BMW, <laughs> allow it in. But if somebody comes in a Khatara Uber, you ask him three questions outside. <laughs> I want the Ubers in there. Oh, I fought for three months mm. to keep those gates open, and now they're open. Mm. They still close the out gate yeah. for some reason. It's the mentality of the state, state to close yeah. and control. Yeah. And we need to open it. And it's become worse. I remember when the metro of Moscow was being built in mm. 1933. Mm. They envisaged the metro stations as the museums of the people. Absolutely. Okay? And yes. you see them and you realize that's one of the best metro stations. So that's why we did the railway stations. Yes. Yeah. Because that happened only when people uh, like like you or foundations or uh, corpuses, they come together and they start running museums and not the government alone. Government can be facilitated. The government can provide you a building uh, uh, space. You know, it's a bit like airline business or hotel business. Governments don't really belong in that space because they should professionalize it. Hmm. They should, they should take actions which are pro-public, uh, where they encourage p public to visit them rather than um, the way they are run. And I'll tell you an example of NGMA, which is really, we, we were having a retrospective of a particular senior artist, and they had a couple of works of that senior artist, and we wanted to borrow them. We must have sent 15 letters mm. to the director, we got no response and eventually we could not borrow the work. Now, 
this is the response from museum and you are a to professional certified organization yeah and we were taking care of in insurance and hmm. uh, transportation and everything we had written that we would be responsible the artist himself had gone to the museum to try and get the work but we never got it and we got no response from the director and it is uh, i mean you don't want, it is difficult to understand you try and borrow a work from moma in um, in new york and you get a response no no and museums th themselves get uh, 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 artifacts and uh, collections from private collectors yeah. yeah we'll just come back we'll just come back and talk about curation presentation uh, logistics all these things are, are important for uh, running a museum we'll just come back and we'll talk about that you are watching the business of art Welcome back. You are watching Business of Art, and I'm Pankaj Pachori. We have three very eminent panelists today talking about museums. And should museums be now considered a sector or an uh, industry so uh, it can uh, get effective government attention? So that's a very important thing. But besides that, now museums have become very professionalized. So why the role of curator is so important in a museum? Why programming content, what you just touched upon, matters so much to get a better idea and a better future for our museums? A museum curator's primary responsibility has developed into one where he is an effective communicator of history or art mm. and making it socially, politically relevant. So you have to know about the anxieties of what is going on in our political environment at the moment, what is happening in the Me Too movement, what is happening in the gender questions, what is happening in religion, in order to be able to show, well, how was it construed in history? Hmm. And it doesn't just mean that I have to be an art historian who is knowledgeable about the quality of line and form, but I have to be able to put it into a certain social context. That's role number one, as it has become. But the word curator comes from the Latin curare, which means he's the caretaker, he's the keeper, he's the rakshak. Hmm. And as a result, mm -hmm. the old-fashioned responsibility and job profile is of somebody who knows how to look after a collection. Yeah. Now, in most Indian museums, the scariest part of a job is when you take over hmm. your position and when you hand over <laughs> your position. Yes. Now, taking the over custodian the custodian. Of, yeah. 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 At the time of taking over, there is an inventory which every curator is handed in a government museum. You see, there are two different kinds of curators. One is the ad hoc private sector curator mm -hmm. who is not actually responsible for a collection. Mm -hmm. He is responsible for the narrative. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then there is a second kind of curator, which it was in Delhi in the 1990s and early 2000s, where the curator was somebody who was a bit of an aesthetician, like an interior decorator, who said, ke, painting thoda upar, painting thoda niche, thoda left, thoda right. You know, that was the kind of curator. That was another kind yeah. of curator. And then you got Absolutely. the kind of curator who became, who was the old fashioned curator who was in charge of a collection. And understood it. And, and understood, understood it and its responsibilities, Absolutely. its conservation, yeah. the quality of what, what condition is a painting in. Mm -hmm. He is the person who receives the entire collection when his predecessor leaves and he has to be able to hand over the property of the people of India to the next curator who takes over in that government Absolutely. museum. It's like, really, but you know, that, that, that uh, requires the kind of thought we have in running the country's other big institutions like say uh, the planning department. We used to have planning commission where people were picked up from private areas, experts and put together and they were, you know, planning the country. This whole, you know, it's not public private partnership sort of a thing, but it's just getting the best person to do the job best. In Rajasthan, in your uh, experience, how that was possible? See, uh, unlike Naman and Kiran, who are really hands-on, my thing really came from a profound interest mm. in ensuring that we share these stories of our past mm. and our present mm. to recognize why, where we're headed in the future. Mm. And I think that the most important thing for me was to try and work a legislation, mm. and I may be wrong, so please interject me here, where you take landmarks, museums, whatever, you, you, you create an autonomy 
hmm. where you have one representative of the government, not the section officer, the finance officer. Uh, who sign every... Uh, no, who attends the, the meeting. Build uh, okay. it around the hmm. system of the governing councils of the Met yeah. Yeah. or the VNA. So at one stage I brought all that material of the v VNA structure because it hmm. was a government entity yes, till it, it changed. Yeah. And I said, let's try and implement this. There was no government yeah. over the last 15 years, who will 20 support. years actually, oh. who was willing to actually do it. Hmm. You know, yeah. put it through parliament, it's the control experiment thing, with it, yeah. adjust it thereafter, open these doors. So in Rajasthan, one experience I'll give you. There are lots, but mm. I will give you one. There was a, a gallerist in Delhi who said to me, uh, Nature Mott, they said mm. to me, we would like to start um, uh, um, a sculpture gallery in Nahargarh Fort in the palace that's just been restored. So I said, no money from the government. You'll raise the money. They said, we'll raise the money from the private sector. Cut a long story short, they raised the money from the private sector. They worked with the state archaeological survey, uh, survey to ensure yeah. that nothing was damaged, no nails yeah, were absolutely. knocked into the wall, etc. Mm. They opened it in nine months mm. because mm. the chief minister said yes. Mm. She later said, I said yes because I thought, how will this happen? But it's happened and it's gone into its second edition. Now, so it may not be the world's greatest thing, but, but it gets. It's a beginning and but, we have to make, sir, make that beginning. I just Can want I? to say one thing. It hmm. gets 6,000 local footfalls of local people every day. In Nahadar, and it's yeah. eight kilometers uphill. Okay. And it's last thing I want to say is that unless the local citizen in that area, in hmm. that town, doesn't want to come to these places, they're never hmm. going to take off. You are right. Every uh, uh, driver in Abu Dhabi, when you land there, knows that the Louvre has come to town. And it's and pride. That is, and that is how it works. Mm. Can, just picking up from that, uh, when you're talking about private uh, involvement in such, I mean, these are also very expensive uh, <coughs> artifacts. And uh, so how do you curate? How did you bring in the professionalism in that? And how do you make your programming so it's different from the government and you want to well, go and see and even one can, I mean, if you have a ticket, I mean, people can buy the ticket and to watch the artifacts. We don't charge for one thing. That's the good. The museum is Open free. door policy. It's open yeah. door. It's free for everybody. Uh, I have built a collection or we have built a collection which is today quite sizable and we curate by and large out of the collection, mm -hmm. but there are exceptions. Mm -hmm. Like uh, currently we have a show of uh, tribal artists, um, which is works are completely borrowed. And that show is going to be on for about six weeks. And we have a lot of programs. We have do a lot of programming with children. Um, we have at least three to four school kids visiting yes, the this, this is important. If a museum is visited by schools, <coughs> school children, I think it's successful. Yeah. Not not in a busload just to show them, but yeah. as, so an, at, as a tool of education. And where I come to the uh, professor hmm. here, how do we link these two, education and museum? I think the first thing is that the museum has to learn to be able to communicate to people in their language. Um, my own profession, and I am guilty of this, my we tend to speak in a language that people don't understand. Mm. Art history has turned into a lot of gobbledygook. And we need to be able to simplify what we say and to be able to communicate in plain language, mm. whether it is in plain English or it is in plain Hindi. Um, in an effort to be able to do that and learning better communication skills from my journalist colleagues, I was able to be able to make sure that the body in Indian art was entirely translated into commonly understood Hindustani. It was a difficult exhibition to be able to translate. Mm. Similarly, when it came to uh, India and the world, we mm. translated it into Marathi as well as into Hindi. Doing this has made a massive difference. The body in Indian art broke all records for the National Museum of India and sold 75,000 tickets to be able mm. to enter that museum. Art education has to start at a much earlier age and it has to go alongside communication and literature, I feel, right from the beginning, from early days. Yeah, that's right. And it can't be something that we leave to college 
to be able to give people an all-round liberal education. Absolutely. <laughs> These are the ideas which we discussed today about the private sector, about public sector, about the education sector. And uh, as you say, uh, uh, Kiranji, that uh, uh, it, should, it is like the airlines business. Think about the airlines business. The government airlines finally is going to fold up and other private airlines are coming in, not with much regulation. And that's what's going to happen here as well, I think, in a few decades' time. And that will be a pity because museums hold our treasures. They are treasures of a collective mankind. They have to be saved, they have to be secured, and they have to be shared. Thanks for watching. I'm Pankit Pachori. We'll see you next week.